Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Gadget Nation with me, Adam Kerr-Rubbers. Here we are at the playground, which is a euphemism, of course, for me entering the playground of technology. I'm really excited for it because I got something for people who like tablets, especially ones which aren't too expensive. Something for all the basketball heads out there. That was my attempt at a basketball throw, which was really bad because it's not a sport I actually play. Also, we entered the land of acoustics. We attended an event to see exactly what's happening with a very, very popular brand. I'm really excited for today, so let's start the show. Okay, uh, there's a lot of enhancement they make into this OS. I mean, a couple of them is one of them which I show you guys just now. is the picture password, so you can basically put a picture into the phone and then put a number in any of the location in the pictures and then set it as a password to lock and unlock the phone. Yep. And then uh, another thing is that there's also a lot of improvement in terms of uh, reading your email, BlackBerry hub management. Now you can actually do a pinch to zoom in and out to see uh, the most important message. We also implemented something like what we call uh, level one alerts, which will, your email will be highlighted as read when it comes in, so that you know you know that this is the most important message that you need to react or respond as soon as possible. Oh, when we first started the show, tablets didn't really exist in terms of popularity like we know it now. They are just absolutely everywhere when the iPad first came out. Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Anyhow, Acer recently hooked us up with the latest iteration of the Iconia series, which is the W4 successor to the W3. It's small, it's cheap, and it should deliver more than its predecessor did. The question is, does it? Let's find out. What you can see right there is something which I'm very excited about. It's the Acer Iconia W4. Obviously, if you know anything about their products, this is the successor to the W3, which in itself was competition to the iPad mini being an eight inch tablet. So obviously this is also an iPad mini competitor. As you can see right there, it's still eight inches. It looks very nifty, very nice. It will also, well, double up as something for a desktop experience, Windows 8.1. And I have to say, I'm rather impressed. Just looking at it, it feels nice in my hands. It doesn't feel like it's too cheap for anything. I should add that the price is 1,099 ringgit. So it's slightly less than 1,100. So obviously price-wise, it is already very appealing. The moment I switch it on, not sure how well you can pick that up, but it is a very nice screen. One of the many improvements touted that this device currently has. That is why I'm excited, especially when you come from a really, really sunny, hot place like Malaysia, to be able to browse makes a big difference. So let's discuss a little bit more about the screen. Firstly, it touts as having zero air gap here. Basically a new technology to ensure that between the panel and the actual screen itself, there's zero air, which allows for better visibility when you're out and about. Obviously for the purpose of filming, I'm underneath a gazebo, but I did walk around outside in the sun with this, which is why I still have my sunglasses here, by the way, just to test it out. And it's pretty nifty if you ask me, definitely an improvement on the previous screen that we've seen. So what about the whole body? Now we have this silver band that runs across it, which is quite a nifty little touch, I have to say. It always adds a little bit of class. Uh, around the sides, we've got the power at the top. We've also got a micro SD card slot here. I'm always a big fan of those because I can never ever get enough storage because I tend to travel quite a bit. Also, obviously the volume rocker, HDMI is there. At the bottom, we've got the speaker grills along with the charging port right there, micro USB and the headphone jack. So very basic in that sense. Now I said there's a micro SD card slot here. There are two variations on this. There's also a 32 GB model and a 64. For testing purposes, I was given this, which is the 64 GB model. And obviously it does the job, especially for memory, it becomes very important. Like I touched on, this also doubles up as a desktop experience just by simply pressing right there. Brings this up example now, press it back. With that in mind, you can install something like Photoshop, etc. You're going to have to use a lot of memory, so I'm very grateful for expandable storage.
So what about the insides? Well, it uses Intel Bay Trail, which is a big advantage. Why? Because it allows the battery consumption to be a lot better on the device. They're claiming up to 10 hours could be used on this, which obviously is a big plus point. It puts it, well, beyond likes of the iPad mini and also some of Google's own tablets, the Nexus is what I'm trying to say, in terms of the eight inch category, of course. Big plus point, however, there are things which I don't particularly like. I went on and on about the screen and how great it is in the sun. However, PPI, you know, how sharp the, the actual screen is, the pixel density. It was 186 on the W3. This, of course, being a W4, it's only gone up to 189, which is a very, very, very nominal difference. And in that sense, it lags behind. It cannot hold a candle to the likes of the iPad mini. Yes, longer battery life, but the screen is not as sharp. Now, once you factor that all in, you have to remember the price point. It is 1099. Like I always say, look at how much you're paying for something. If it's that cheap, don't expect the best of the best. So in that aspect, perhaps I'm being unfair on the device. I'm not entirely certain. All I do know is I wish being a successor to W3, I wish it had a much bigger PPI jump as opposed from 186 to 189, maybe to 19 something, you know, just to make it a little bit sharper, that little bit more worthy of the title successor. So what do I think about this in closing? Well, it's a nice device. I mean, it's light, it's slightly over 400 grams, it's about 10 mm thick right here. So obviously it's not gonna be too heavy on your hands, too large or cumbersome to hold, not too thick. The great battery life, like I mentioned, 10 hours, not sure how long that's gonna last for, but obviously it's already outdoing the likes of the iPad mini, which this would be its direct competitor to. The big issue being, it's just a really throttle down desktop experience. It touts itself, of course, as being more than just a tablet. You can easily switch just by pressing the button right there to the desktop experience. But with all the Intel Atom processors, it just doesn't have enough kick, enough power, enough juice to really run a lot of apps. Therefore, you're very limited in what you can do. And day-to-day -day stuff, well, it should be okay, but if you want to try this or that in terms of using a desktop, you'll probably struggle to do so. But it's okay. I quite enjoyed it as a tablet, I have to say, as I cruise my way through, etc. So do check it out. Let me know what you think, because I'm still unsure. I mean, it's got so many great features inside it. Is it a worthy successor to the W3? Still not certain, need more time with it. But at 1099, it's definitely worth just a quick look at least.